What's up guys, this is the House from Gun Gamers. And I'm Kyle. And we are going to talk about uh, today what kind of sleeping systems we bring out for 24 plus hour Milsim Airsoft games. Uh, now for people who are watching this who have a background in camping and who have a background in backpacking, a lot of this is probably going to be review. But if you have never done any serious lightweight camping and you're looking for options that are kind of affordable and maybe some options that aren't as affordable but are really good, uh, then we're going to talk about uh, what we like and what we use and hopefully it's helpful for you as you are shopping around for your first 24 hour or whatever hour or maybe your second or third and you know your first one sucked, Milsim game. Yep, and we're going to start out with the bottommost layer which is your sleeping pad. Yep. And one thing I want to talk about with sleeping pad is when you're choosing a sleeping pad, beyond all the options, the number one you have to think about is R value. And when it comes to sleeping pads, what they do ultimately is they're keeping you warm from the ground because the ground will suck all the heat out of you no matter how mm -hmm. awesome your sleeping bag is if you don't have that insulating layer underneath. And no matter how warm you think the air is, yeah. the ground will hate you. The ground, the ground will suck and your life will be miserable. Now, for our value as a guide, generally what's considered 2.1 is the threshold for what's considered a three-season sleeping bag, anywhere from 2.1 to 3.3. Anything lower than a 2.1 R value is really a summer-only situation that you don't want to mm -hmm. be any lighter than. And if for a milsim event where you might be wet, you're not in ideal conditions, I would definitely, if possible, unless it's a really warm summer event, I would stick with that 2.1 threshold. Yeah, that's generally what I think most of us stick to is you know, your average three season sleeping mat, at right. least. Because yeah. there's not too many winter Milsim games around here. No, so. there is not. Yeah. Um, but if you are going to do winter, I would stick with at least a four, I mean, probably, yeah. probably higher. Um, but let's get into it. Now we have, um, we, so we're going to start from cheapest and work our way up. And the cheapest is just your standard Thermarest sleeping pad. These are 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, they have an R value of 2.6, I believe. And this one, the small one, is 14 ounces. And then the large one is 19 ounces, same R value rating. Um, well, I mean, you've had a lot yeah. of sleeping on this. What would you? Yeah, I, I mean, my, my thing with these is they just work. Uh, they're not super cushiony. They're no. cushiony enough to be comfortable compared to like the rocks on the ground. Correct. But you're not going to get a mattress night's sleep on one of these. No. You know, these aren't the inflatable mattress you bring out for the car camping trip when you and your buddies have a cooler full of beers. This is the thing you strap to your backpack because you don't want to be cold on the ground at night. Uh, but generally speaking with these, I find that if it gets down to like the 30s, not the 30s, rather the 40s, you're still okay. Yes. Uh, it, because, for example, Desolation 2, uh, not Desolation 2 yet, uh, Desolation, when we were out and it was, you know, raining and in the 40s the entire weekend, I was not losing heat to the ground. Uh, I was losing heat to my shelter, but I'll discuss that when we get there. Uh, but this actually did keep me warm from the ground, you know, in down to like in the 40s with rain with a wet, cold ground. So this is generally, I think, good enough for your average weather that you might run into at your normal Milsim game. But an important factor that Kyle just mentioned is size. Kyle and I are two very different people in terms of size. Yes. Uh, well, how tall are you? 5'10". And, and what's your, like, I mean, you could see just comparatively. Yeah, he, he's, he's a, a much, much wider dude. Wider. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm about 6'3". So... When Kyle and I are choosing sleeping mats, you know, Kyle gets to pick the lighter, smaller one if he's just getting a standard roll-up, whereas if you're a bigger dude, do not think, oh, I can squeeze onto the small sleeping mat, because you can't, and you'll suck. Yeah. So it's just the worst when you have a tiny sleeping mat and you're a big dude. I mean, you tried having a small sleeping mat at I Saratom. Tr I tried an even smaller one. I did a, uh, a Russian Transformer mat, which is thinner than this. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it folds out into a three-quarter mat. Now, it technically worked if you didn't move at all and you kept your elbows up. Yep. But outside of that very specific situation, you would end up on the hard ground, you'd end up fucking cold. And it, I mean, some people, they'll just be able to sleep like that, and good for you, I can't do that. And now, actually, after laying on yours for a bit when we were taking like a nap during the day, I would actually almost consider the weight penalty for the bigger one worth it 
because still at my size, I'm an average size guy. You have to be careful of where you place your arms on this because you yep. have to place them right at your side. If you sleep with your elbows out at all, they're going to be off the pad. Yeah. Lucky for me, I'm a side sleeper usually. Yeah, if you're so a side sleeper, this makes more. this a little easier for me. But even this like would be a little small for me for side sleep. No, I bet your shoulder blades would go right off the edge of that. Yeah, so it, it's a little tricky. But you know, pick the right size. Look at the measurements. Uh, if you don't know what size sleeping pad to get, just lie down on the ground. Have your buddy you know take a tape measure and measure approximately how much space you need and give yourself some wiggle room because when you're sleeping you do move and especially you'll be moving when you're outside and you're tossing and turning trying to get comfortable maybe you put your sleeping mat on tree root which don't do that but yeah shit happens when it's you know hour 30 of milson west yes uh, <laughs> we make so, dumb decisions yeah sometimes dumb stuff happens but um definitely pick the right size sleeping mat and get a thick one uh, there's some that are like just yoga mats. Yeah, don't, like the, don't do that. I don't like the military surplus sleeping mats. No, the I, ones that miserable. a lot of the guys use. I mean, you're warm still like this, but you're even less comfortable. Yeah. Now they are very packable. Is yes. the advantage. But I generally think Thermarest is the way to go. I think they make better sleeping pads that are a little more comfortable. They're a little bit more of a creature comfort, and sometimes you're just gonna want that. Yeah. So are they a little bigger? Yes. Are they worth it? Also, yes. Yes. Um, to go up to the next thing, after you get away, one of the, the biggest advantages is you can't really destroy these on the field. Oh no, You're, you will destroy yourself before you destroy that. Which probably. is the, the big weakness is when you transition over to these, which is this is your inflatable sleeping pad. Yep. Now this is pretty much as light as it gets. Now this is a 13 ounce and it includes a pillow with that yep. weight. Um, but the disadvantage is this is a summer only pad because it has an R value of like 1.5. So it has very limited warmth in that, and it's very thin. It's just as thin as this. Um, but the advantage is this is twice as comfortable as these sleeping pads, at least for this ultralight one. Um, yep. Now, if you're looking at these kind of pads, one of the important things to consider is the thickness of the material that they're made of, especially because we're air softers. Now, you can find a lot of them on Amazon, which are made out of 20D nylon, which if you're familiar with nylon, you know that is like paper thin. Yeah. And I guarantee you, you will put a fucking hole in it, and then you're going to wake up flat. Or if you're on Milson West, that means you got another night, except now you have no sleeping pad. And life sucks. Yep. Um, so stick with a 75D nylon. Um, this uh, The bottom is 75D, uh, and that's what you're going to look at. This is going to be around 13 ounces much more comfortable and you actually can blow this up in about three breaths so it doesn't take a long time to blow up so you don't spend a lot of time doing it um and that's what i like about this now it's very easy to overstep this though now this isn't one that i would use for milson west but it's a perfect example this is a three inch thick sleeping pad that yeah. you can get but the problem is it's going to take you five minutes to blow this fucking thing up and then you have to worry about storing it and you have to doing this well exhausted trying to blow this thing up. Well, and that's my main issue with all inflatable sleeping pads. Correct. Now, for my first Milson West, uh, Caspian Gap, uh, I used, I don't know what exactly it was, I'll put a picture of it up, but it was like one of those kind of self-inflate sleeping yeah. pads. Oh yeah, And I think those are the worst of both worlds. The, the thing with those is they're not particularly durable, for oh. one, uh, so if you've got like any pieces of your gear poking off, you can very easily put a hole in it. But number two, they don't pack down as small nope. as they should for nope. their uh, for you know what they are. And number three, you do still have to take time to inflate them. They don't really self-inflate to a sufficient degree that you're comfortable. No. Uh, so I don't like those self-inflate sleeping pads. Now, I got like a big queen size one for when I'm car camping, because whatever. Yeah. But when I'm actually packing it into an AO for a Milson West game or Omega or anything like that, yeah. I don't want it because it's just not comfortable. Uh, now, I actually don't like inflatable sleeping pads in general yes. because I like things to be idiot proof. And when I'm super tired and maybe I'm setting this up under night vision because we're enforcing light discipline. Yes. And maybe I have no idea, you know, what I'm doing because I'm super tired. Uh, I like having things be idiot proof. I like pulling this off my rug, laying it down, sleeping on it. Yes. Uh, but I also like things to be very durable because I destroy things. Yes. And that's why any of these inflatable sleeping pads, if you have any doubt that you might break something. Don't do it. Don't carry it. Don't, yeah, don't do it. Like I mean, um, even I had a roll up sleeping mat for, um, uh, you weren't at this game, but it was for the second Caspian, Caspian Breakout. Okay. I had a roll up sleeping mat that was like really thick and really comfortable and really insulated, but it was a soft foam. Okay. So I fucking 
wrecked that thing. Uh, that thing got destroyed in one game because you know laying on it with all my gear on and you know putting it on uh, you know on the stones when we were out part of the guardian not the guardian center the uh, GTI it, it got destroyed. There's gashes and gouges in it and it's it's a borderline unusable after one game and another game would probably tear it in half. So I generally like buying you know more reinforced kind of military grade I gotta hate that term but you know yeah. more durable hard use stuff correct if you're gonna go down this route and I'm actually gonna be trying one at the battle for the depot game I mm -hmm. just bought a new one I'm gonna try because it, it might snow at that game so I needed something yeah. warmer this is too cold it's not gonna work this is too big it's not meant for this um, and it's a 75 d1 it's only two and a half inches thick you can supposedly blow it up in about 10 breaths now we'll see if it'll hold up, mm -hmm. if it, it'll survive, because it's only one night, so that's why I'm, it's a perfect test ground for it. Um, but if you're overly tough like he is on shit, skip these. It, yep. Just just skip them. You won't sleep quite as well, at, you know, on these, but you won't also just be out of sleep system a second night, which is the worst scenario. Yep. If you're gonna do these, try it on like one night events, like the Msato events yep. first, and make sure it's gonna work. And then the other thing is when you're doing these, you have to be prepared. You are never just going to lay these directly on the ground. You cannot do it. You will destroy them. Don't do it. And that's the other reason I don't like the inflatables. Correct. You, no matter, even if you get the 75 D ones, eventually you're just going to wear a hole in it yep. and, and you're going to have, and you're, it's going to deflate. Um, don't do it. You have to be prepared to use it with a baby sack or whatever other, or you need a ground tarp. You need more things, which then boosts the weight up and that's so. It's very niche if you want to run these. 99% of people, I feel, are better off with these. I know I am. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to try and do this because I want to be comfortable. I'm big about being comfortable when I sleep. But it's very likely that my end up finish is going to be just this. Yeah. So, But, yeah. But we will report back with we the We will report on back. Um, but, yeah, I'd say this covers. Yeah, it covers that. I'd say that covers the ground piece. Now let's move on to the shelter bit. Yep. <clears throat> All right. For this section, we're going to talk about shelters yes and shelters can be very cheap and they can be very expensive and they can have a variety of coverage and and options. they can work in a variety of ways be set up a variety of ways i'll include some pictures for, you know Correct. while we're talking about this so let's start at the bottom of the pile with the cheapest option which is a poncho yeah this is just uh an over one of the oversized ponchos you can get these on amazon for 20 bucks yeah you know there's military ponchos you can get from like rothko and whatnot that have the hoods there's yeah. all kinds of different stuff a bunch get. of different options from very cheap to actually kind of expensive for some of them yeah some of them can get expensive but some of the expensive ones are really good if you want a poncho correct um this was 20 dollars on amazon it's got the hooks in the corners and you can set up ponchos a bunch of different ways to act as shelters i prefer the ranger diamond is actually my favorite mm -hmm. way to do it what's your uh, I'm a I'm a simpleton. I usually just do a lean to, but I'm gonna experiment more with doing uh, you know more Ranger Diamond type stuff in the future because the lean to I set up at uh, Omega Events Desolation yeah. was not tall enough. Oh, okay. Because you know I'm a I'm a large man, so I need a tall shelter, and I was like really trying to stretch the length because I have kind of a small tarp. Yep. I was really trying to stretch the length of it, and I ended up doing with the lean to not having it be tall enough and the rain was in contact with my sleeping form oh. and even with my clothes and my bivy sack and we'll talk more about the sleep system i had uh i was losing heat to the water running down the tarp all night and it was miserable yeah. so uh, i would definitely recommend uh if you're a bigger dude and you uh, don't have a super big piece of shelter get something uh, other than a lean-to going yeah, other than a lean-to and a poncho probably isn't going to work if you're a really, really yeah, big Ponchos kid. for big people, they have limitations. I would say my height is probably about the limit that I would want to run just a poncho before transitioning over to a tarp. Or and maybe two ponchos. Or, or two ponchos. Or a, a large tarp is probably yeah. better. This is about 16 ounces, and then a, but a tarp might be better for someone a little bit bigger, and that'll be a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. Don't go to like the Home Depot tarps. Buy like an actual camping tarp. It, it, it's a much better. The Home Depot tarps are you know heavier for what they are. They're meant to be a little more durable for like storing wood outside and whatnot. They're not great camping tarps. They're not very packable. They're a little big. Yeah. I would recommend, you know, getting a camping tarp on the internet. You know, Amazon's a great resource, right? Uh, but yeah, that's what I would recommend. Get a real like camping tarp. Uh, yeah, and it's, it, and again, not that expensive. Yeah. Now, real quick, we don't have any tents on this table. No, Why is not. that? The reason we don't have tents is because, actually, any? Can you think of any that allow it? Omega. 
Omega allows it. Okay, so there's one. But other than that, no one else actually allows tents on the field. Yeah, and the reason for that is because tents can take forever to set up. Yes. And then tents are just a pain. And, yes. you know, they're very big in a lot of cases unless you get, like, the single-man tents. Correct. Uh, or some of the army tents are, you know, pretty manageable. I know uh, Ian had, like, one of uh, one of his issued tents, I think, at Omega. And I would recommend, you know, for, like, an Omega game maybe, yeah, bring a tent. Because, you know, you're setting it up and you're going to kind of leave it there. Uh, but when you need to be more mobile and we need to be more packable... I think the tarp is it's a lot faster. Yes. It's a lot more convenient. It's more flexible. Uh, so I think that tarps make a lot more sense. And also, you know, according to the tax op of many 24 hour and 40 hour plus games, you're not supposed to have a tent anyway. So uh, don't do a tent. You know, I know we get people all the time asking, oh, well, what if I do this tent? Is that going to be good? Or what if I when do like. When I was like... first debating to go, I was like, well, what if I got a military pup tent? Would that work? And they're like, no, just don't do it. Yeah, and then you know you went to Saratov and it was fine. It was you realize you don't need it. You yeah, don't you, you don't need it. You can live without it. It'll be lighter. You'll have to carry less shit. Skip the time. Yep. Um, let's move on to the next thing, and this is the Soul Escape Bibby. I like this a lot, kind of. The, now the issue, and this is a particular issue for me, and maybe some of you out there as well. This is a has a solar kind of thermal layer that reflects a lot of heat, so you add warmth. So if your sleeping bag may not be fully up to the task, this will help with that. Mm -hmm. And it's super light, it's eight and a half ounces, and you can totally get all the way inside of it to protect yourself from the rain. The problem is, is it's not for people who get claustrophobic. If you get claustrophobic, you will suffer and you will unzip this and then you will lose all your fucking heat and you will be miserable. Yeah. Tried it, don't do it. And it's a little small. Like, it is, uh, it I is, really you would not fit. fit. Yeah, I really did not fit in that. I fit, but if, if you're like my size, you're around 5'10", and you're not overly large, you will fit. But if you get claustrophobic, like if you can't sleep in a mummy bag, don't get this. It won't mm -hmm. work for you. Um, I could use it maybe in the middle of the summer if I left it unzipped and held it over like a top quilt. It would work in that situation. But again, then it's summer and I don't have yeah. to worry about the heat properties. If you're worried about cold and heat and you're using this as a factor of how warm you're staying, you can't be claustrophobic or it just simply won't work. But if you're in summer, you have some options. And I think it makes actually a good alternative to a standard bivy sack because it's so light. Yeah. Now, a bivy sack, for anyone unfamiliar, is, you know, it's a cover that you put over your sleeping bag and it's kind of the outer shell of your sleep system. Correct. And it's usually supposed to be waterproof, windproof, uh, all kinds of proof, you know. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to keep you dry and help you stay warm inside of its little protective shell. Yeah. Uh, they usually have a hood that like go, you know, goes behind your head when you're sleeping and over your face. Yes. Um, quick note, I don't usually get like claustrophobic but I find that I can't sleep with something over my face it's when I'm on hard. my back. For some reason, it really weirds me out. Uh, quick tip, if you're like that, sleep on your side or sleep on your stomach. Because somehow, like, that tricks my brain into being like, Yours oh, is this okay. is fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, if my head is covered and I'm on, like, my stomach or my side, no big deal. That's fine. Yeah. But if I'm on my back and, like, I've got something pressing against my face, like, down on me, I'm like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I, it's a I'm weird, the same way. Yeah. It's a weird thing. And I know a surprising number of people who are that way. So if you're like that, uh, try side or stomach sleeping if you can. Um, or maybe try to set up your shelter so you don't eat the face hood. That's right. probably your best bet if you can. Yeah. If you can use this and then, because uh, you have to really kind of tuck yourself in to get your face over it and use it in conjunction with the tarp to cover mm -hmm. for the top half, you will be golden. I think this is a good option. Now, next. Yeah, is this gonna... is the military bivy sack. Now, this is not. The military bivy sacks usually come as part of the military sleep system, yes. which is like a four piece. That, yeah. No, a three piece thing, I think. Yeah. No, four piece, because if you count the bag. Uh, so usually it's a stuff sack. A yeah, bivy it's a four system. Is it? Yeah, it's a stuff sack that contains a bivy sack and then two different sleeping bags. A warm weather sleeping bag and a cold weather sleeping bag. And if you need to, you can zip the cold weather and the warm weather together, all zipped into the bivy sack and sleep down to like zero degrees. It's negative 10. It's ready to. Negative 10. Yeah, it's absurd. Uh, now, I didn't get the full military sleep system uh, when I was starting out because I was like, oh, I don't need it. I just need a whoopee. We'll get to that. Um <laughs> But I got the bivy sack for like, I think, 
you can find them for 60 to 80 bucks. Yep. Uh, and you know, you can get even better deals on them if you really shop around. I got mine, you know, new, I think for like 80 bucks. I, I didn't get the best that's pretty, deal. That's pretty standard though. I would yeah. say that's a standard price. And then this is an old stuff sack I had from like the Thermarest. I've also got my uh, poncho in here, which is a really small snug pack uh, poncho. But the military bivy sack I find is great as an affordable option. It's heavy and it's a little large yeah, compared to a lot of other options. Uh, just the sack itself is two and a half pounds without any of the warming layers with it. And this is like, it, it packs down to like something like this. I also have paracord and my tarp in here. So realistically, if I take the tarp out, you know what you're getting at, this is my tarp, by the way. This is the Snug Pack Stash of Shelter. That's a good one, I like this that This is a one. great one, I really like this. Uh, but this is about what the bivy sack packs down to. So that's pretty respectable. It, yeah, it's not a bad size. Um, but that is not the smallest. No, it is, it's definitely not the smallest out there. It's a little heavier if you're really keeping yeah. track of weight. Um, but it's very durable. Very, very durable, which and is nice. And what I like about it is if you're a bigger dude like me, you know. You fit well. It, it fits great. Uh, because it's meant to fit a soldier of varying sizes, plus their kit, yep. oftentimes, uh, or the two other sleeping bags you would put inside of it. Correct. So that's perfect for me because if I just go in there with just me, and I've done it before with a sleeping bag and uh, an ISO mat underneath it, yep. or even inside of it. If I you put had, it inside is how I tend to yeah, do it. Uh, when I was using the inflatable one, uh, when I was doing a test bed with that, I put the inflatable little sleeping pad I had inside the bivy sack. And then I had my mummy bag I was using at the time, uh, which then I decided I didn't like because I couldn't sleep with my arms like this. Yep. Um, but we'll talk about that more when we talk about sleeping bags. But then I uh, I did that all inside the bivy sack and I still have plenty of room. Correct. And you don't have to get the full sleep system. You can just get this and you, if you have your own sleeping bag yep. or blankets or whatever, however you're gonna do it, just get the shell and then don't spend the money for the extra system. Honestly, the uh, the military sleeping bags they work, but they are bulky as fuck. And they're heavy. They are, and they're heavy. So, and, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about yep. that in the sleep system. But the whole military sleep system does pack down to a very reasonable size it's, when you get the good like stuff sack. That yeah, it's when meant you for. can really kind of compress it. So that's where this is, and then this is about an eighty dollar one. Now, then this is your high end one. This is yep. a this is a snug pack ionosphere or stratosphere. I'm sorry. Uh, bivy. And now these will also fit inside this bag. I just took them out for ease of application. Now the big difference is this is about $130, $135 is what this average runs for. And what do you get with this that you don't get with this? The big thing is, is you get a, you get these uh, rods that you can use to set it up so it won't sit on your face. You have like, yeah. a, it lifts up over your head so you don't have that claustrophobic feeling. That and and I actually about. really like that feature so I'm considering getting one of these. And uh, then this also has the option, it has zip out vents on the front and the back so you can add breathability to it, which is nice as well. And the back one can be covered from the rain so even if it's raining, you still get that ventilation, which is why I like it. Now this, even with these uh, rods and the stakes, it still comes in at 2.44 pounds. So about the exact same as this, but you get lift off of your face and the stakes so you can stake it down. So uh, it's a superior system for the same amount of weight, but you pay for it. And yeah. that, that's kind of what it comes down to. You don't need this. You can, you can go with this or this or any of these and be fine, but this is the- This the is like the, the most creature comfort yeah. type of bivy sack and that and that's not even talk about some of like the ultra expensive options. no you can you can spend if you want to pay this. a lot of money you can get some really crazy stuff yeah there's some there's some high-end camping bivy sacks that will make this look very very cheap yeah and but i think this is a nice balance because this is really tough you get it in the tactical colors yeah I, I i wouldn't see any reason to go above and beyond this unless you're really counting ounces and you're willing to spend mm -hmm. a lot of money but honestly, with how much our guns weigh and shit like that, there's so many areas that we could cut weight first before we have to spend hundreds of dollars to go above and beyond this to trim yeah. a pound off. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, these so, are our shelters. You can, you don't have to spend a lot or you can spend a lot, uh, but that's what we use. Yeah. So now we will move on to sleep systems. All right. So now we're moving on to sleep systems. And uh, so this is actually a snug pack um, jungle blanket that I have inside a different stuff sack because I lost stuff sack came with. But this is very comparable to a Whoopi. 
Yes, uh, Wubi, a little warmer. A little, yeah, the Jungle Blanket is a little warmer than the Wubby. Uh, so many people speak so highly of the Wubby. We know a lot of people who love the Wubby. Yes. I think the Wubby is a good, like, backup system or supplemental system. Or summer weight. Or summer weight. Like summer if, it's, weight. if it's really warm, yeah, you'll get away with a Wubby. I would not rely on a Wubby as the only thing, I w- generally speaking. I would say 60 degrees. If it's going to suit yeah. 60 and above, I would say this is a good option. Yeah, I was actually comfortable with this uh, at Ball Car Surge. Okay. Uh, when it was in like, you know, mid 50s to low 60s at night, even yeah. when it was raining, uh, that was fine. But then I went to Desolation. <laughs> and, and it was in the were 40s. And it was raining. <laughs> and I was losing body heat from my shelter. Yes. And all I had was the jungle blanket inside my, you know, bivy sack. <laughs> And I was not having a good night. Uh, I did not sleep very much at Desolation. I think I was basically up for all 40 hours. Uh, it was rough. But this is good as a supplemental system. You know, as like maybe you're on watch and you want to wrap yourself up in something nice and warm and feel comfortable. Good. It, it, it's, but if, again, if you're going to be in summer only events, it's a good option. It's 20, 24 ounces in weight, so it's not yep. that heavy. And it's about, what, $30, $35, somewhere in that range. Yeah, you can get them for cheap. And Whoobies, you can get for like $20. Yeah, and Whoobies, you can get... But the advantage of this, this is longer, so you can actually wrap yeah. your whole body. The, yeah. the Whoobie doesn't I like do the Jungle Blanket better than the Whoobie because... And I know that's going to sound like heresy, but I like it better than the Whoobie because it's a little bit larger, which I need. Uh, and also it, it's because warmer. it's a little bit warmer. Yeah, So I think it's better than a Whoobie. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's my opinion too. I, I know we're probably gonna get a lot of hateful comments. We will get a lot of hateful comments. Uh, but yeah, so you know, good stuff. But backup or summer weight system. Now for the next tier, I'm gonna talk about one that isn't even here uh, because I did some research because um, Chris was talking about because he's looking at getting into the 24 hour events, but he's not mm-hmm. sure what to get. And I was thinking, I'm like, well, what's a good budget option if I want to be at this level but yeah. not at this price point? And I said, so I looked around. You can get a Coleman zero degree sleeping bag for big and tall mm-hmm. for $40. Oh, wow. 40 bucks. But, but it's five point something pounds. Yeah, it's heavy. It's heavy. So if you want to have something that's warm and you're going to be in colder events and you don't have a lot of money, look at Coleman or you know something similar to it. You can do it. And, there, and I found some other ones that were around 40 that were no-name brands that were supposedly only four pounds. Yeah, uh, or you can buy, you know, your average like mummy bag that you can get at your average sporting goods store. That, uh, that, and that's that what was that my is. first kind of attempt. But yeah, you know, a lot of those are a lot heavier too. Uh, but the main thing with a lot of those is they're not very big. Yes. Uh, so when you're a bigger guy like me, you, you don't fit yeah. so well. Uh, the advantage is you you can get very claustrophobic in those if for the mummy style bags, and if you have to have them unzipped, you lose a lot of heat value. Yep. Now him and I both have twenty degree bags. And there is a reason for that. Mm-hmm. And the reason for 20 degree bags is for campers, that is the most common uh, temperature rating you go with. Not because you're gonna be out in 20 degree weather, because it's the most versatile temperature. Yeah. Uh, because it means you can take it down to 20 degrees, but if you don't run it all tight and snugged up on you, you can easily run it at much higher temperatures. Yeah, if you unzip it and like take off your outer layer, you yeah. can still be comfortable in the 40s, 50s, 60s. Correct. And that's what makes it a great variable temperature. So if you want something warmer than this, you have an option without spending yep. a ton of money that you can do it in. But then what we then we go up to is a personal thing I like mine. This is a top quilt by Hammock here, rated for 20 degrees. Uh, this is only 24 ounces, despite the size difference. These actually weigh the same, but this is rated to 20 degrees because it's a top quilt. And what that means is, if you imagine a sleeping bag, just remove the whole all the material underneath it. And the reason they do that is because when you compress down, you lose all the insulation out of it anyways. So they figure, well, let's just remove it, save all the weight. And again, that's why the sleeping pads become important, why you need that insulation on the ground. Um, And then I went with this because it was only 24 ounces, but this is not cheap. Uh, This was $180 as I have it set up. Yeah. Not cheap. Uh, But it's really lightweight. It's really warm and it's a top quilt. And if you if you have problems sleeping in sleeping bags, seriously look at top quilt. There's a lot of ones out there that don't cost quite as much as this that can do this. But again, you're just trading weight yeah. for, for cost. Uh, but there is one downside to top quilts. 
That is, certain sleeping pads are designed with pockets so the insulation of a sleeping bag can expand into them to add warmth. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware when you're doing this. Well, I think actually the Thermo Ridge. Yes, from... it, it, to a degree, yeah. that, that has it. And, but with inflatable sleeping pads, it's more so because they have deeper pockets. Yeah. So when you do this, I would say you're actually, if this is a 20 degree bag, it's probably more of a 30 degree bag if you have one of those style sleeping pads because yeah. you are gonna lose a little bit of heat. So that is the downside to this. But overall, I love this and I'm very happy with it. So I want a little more premium. This is about a $200 sleeping bag. Uh, so it's expensive. Yeah, not uh, that much different from not, this. Not super different, yeah. but you know, compared to a lot of sleeping bags, a lot of people buy it, this is this it's Very, is very premium. But packs down smaller nice and than small. mine Sm yeah smaller than kyle's just yeah. about and it's heavier though is yeah. the one downside because it is a full sleeping bag uh now you looked up the weight on it's this it's two pounds seven ounces for the long yeah. six ounces for the short yeah so or, this uh, is regular i'm sorry so it's just about a 40 ounce sleeping bag correct uh so that's the downside is you know you have a, a 40 of beer basically in your uh Never mind, that was a lame joke. So that's the downside is this is a little bit heavier, but it is also a 20 degree sleeping bag and it's a long, which again, I need. Uh, what I like about this compared to a lot of other sleeping bags is it's a little roomier. Yes. And you know, once you get a long sleeping bag for when you're, you know, I'd say about 6'2 and above, you really should be getting a long sleeping bag. I, yeah, 6'2 is definitely, I would. Honestly, I'd consider it six feet and above, just so that you have the extra room. Yeah, because I'm 5'10, and this says it's rated up to 6'1. If I was any taller, I would have wanted yeah. a longer version. I'd say if you're about six feet or above, you should consider a long sleeping bag. Uh, but I'm about 6'3, so this is perfect. Uh, it's roomy, it's not a mummy bag, it's kind of more like you know your classic sleeping bag shape. It's a little, this is a rectangular. Yeah, a little more rectangular. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good fit. Uh, the reason I like something like this is because it's a little roomier, it's rated down to 20 degrees, I can unzip the side if I get too warm, yes. uh, and I you know, have room where I can you know sleep on my side or I can sleep on my front or whatever. Basically, it's a warm sleeping bag, it's not super heavy, it packs down nicely, it's very nice. Good job, L.L. Bean. Uh, this is what you're going to want to go with if you want a really flexible sleeping bag. Not a top quilt, a sleeping bag. Now, top quilts have their own advantages that Kyle discussed. Sleeping bags, it's a sleeping bag. What more do you want me to say? Actually, one thing for a top, if you are looking at getting a top quilt, plan it well in advance because most top quilts, the best deal is hammock gear by far. Mm -hmm. Because if you buy one of the pre-made ones uh, about this price from a very of other brands, you're going to spend about 300 plus. Yeah. It, these guys, they make it to order so you can pick the fabrics so you can get like this cool green and stuff like that. Uh, but the lead time on this is seven to 10 weeks right now. Yeah. Plan yeah. it well in advance. Plan it well in advance. Yeah. And then if you want, you know, any other sleeping bag, you know, Pick one that's rated well, that's a weight you're willing to carry, and that's a price you're willing to pay. Correct. And, and, and really, for sleeping bags, ultimately, what it is, is aim for 20 degrees if you can. Mm -hmm. And it's how much money is just how much weight you can take off. Yep. That's, that's really kind of what it turns into. It, that's the game. But uh, we were willing to spend more money for it, and uh, I, we think it's worth it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Yeah. Uh, the first real test of this will be uh, Revenant. You know, I, I consider like an Omega game a real test of gear. I think Battle at the Depot is going to be a test just because it's going to be so fucking cold. Yeah, Battle at the Depot will be a good test too, but I think Revenant, I think Revenant, Revenant for me is going to be the real, real test because that's like bringing it out, you know, 48 hours, sleeping out two nights after I'm all dirty and crappy. So, yeah. But yeah, um, that's kind of our sleep systems. Now, yeah. sleep systems, I think, kind of take up the most room in your ruck generally. Most room and almost the most weight outside of water. Yeah. I would say sleep systems are generally going to take up most of your room in your ruck. If you ditch the sleep system, you could probably get away with an assault pack. Absolutely. Well, because if you if it was like the middle of the summer day, you took like that ultralight pad that mm -hmm. I had, and then you take that eight and a half ounce bivy sack, and you just run it with that, you've got a sleep system that is a pound and a half. Yeah. And you could do Wait, that I, in I'm gonna like a summer I'm going to grab that so you event. can see this at a summer event. Because this could be your entire sleep system. Just this. Yeah, just the bivy sack and the inflatable. Pound and a half. Now this would be awesome, but again, this will only work in the middle of summer. Yeah. Any other time, this will not work. Yeah. But for all those other times, that's where the rest of the shit comes into play. So yeah, those are kind of what we use for sleep systems, uh, why we use it, and 
how we came to have our opinions on sleep systems. Uh, if you have a lot of experience and you have your own opinions, you have your own thoughts, or maybe you have suggestions that you think are better than what we put in this video, because we're not experts. No, we're but not, we're, we're, if you are an expert, and yeah, if, you're, you're, no, if you're a through hiker, let us know. What did we do wrong? Because it's probably everything. Yeah, no, really. Tell us what we did wrong. <laughs> put it down in the comments. Uh, upvote all the good comments. You know, Make sure that this is a good resource for people, one way or another. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, that just about covers it. So, for this episode of Gun Gamers, I've been Eric. I'm Kyle. And we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs> 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 it wasn't that good. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Check the description below if you'd like to buy a t-shirt or a patch, and use the coupon code JUDY10 for 10% off of your next order at Amped Airsoft. Thank you again for watching, and praise Judy. Yeah, I am a whore. It's a good video intro right there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Hausnick, and I am a whore. <laughs>